So now let's look at actually how structs work in what I'll call basic struct usage. So we'll see how to declare a struct and how to access the fields of a struct. And so that's the things that we want to look out for here. The example that I want to do is something about um, room, classroom info. And so I'm going to quickly type up a program which doesn't use structs that reads in some information about a classroom and then prints it out. Okay, so here's my little program that just reads in a room number and how many seats and a response and says whether it's a lab. So this will work. Um, if I run it, then like 103 has 12 seats and it is a lab. Um, so that works. Now the question is, how could we use a struct here instead? When we just have a single struct in our program, I want to emphasize that it, this, using a struct so far won't gain us a lot, but we're just starting with these small examples to understand the syntax of what's going on. So if I want to make a struct, the syntax is I say struct, then I say the name of my struct, which will be rube. A lot of times we want to use a capital name for structs, a capital letter to start the name of a struct to remind ourselves that it's a type. And then everything about the structs goes inside curly braces and then it's really just going to be exactly what I have here so I use what I might have as variables elsewhere now these are going to be kind of uh, what's called fields inside the struct so each room is going to have a number uh, I don't have to say room num anymore I could just say num um, seats and a bool for whether or not it's a lab notice that these can have any names that we want and uh, any types that we want here so there's this the, really the key value of a struct versus an array is that an array has to be can be multiple things that really share one name and also all have the same have the same type whereas inside a struct we can have different names for the different pieces and they can all have different types and so now if i want to use this in my program i make a single variable and the type of this variable is struct room and then uh i'll say whatever my variable name is so I'll call it rm and now every time where I would use one of these things now this will give an error because there's no variable called room num what I would use instead is rm dot num so this is the third thing to know is that we use this dot syntax to get from a struct type to one of the types of the things inside the struct so instead of seats I'll say um, rm dot seats instead so the response is still a local variable but then islab will be rm.islab. This will be rm.islab, and same thing down here. So you can call this dot operator as many times as you want to um, access the individual pieces of a struct. So what's the key here is that I made this type up here uh, with struct room, and then every time I want to use, uh, so then I declare a variable of that type right here, I have to use this whole thing is actually the name of that type struct room and then i access it using the dot operator like i have in these multiple places so now this should work the same and yes i made an error so you'll get this error it says this this struct has no member named room num and so that's saying that i tried to use this dot but i i put a name there that doesn't actually exist and of course that's right because i called it num not room num so let me fix that and now if I compile again, that works. And I can run the program the same as before. So um, 438 is my office in Hopper Hall. It has three seats inside it, and it is uh, not a lab. OK, so that's how that program should work. So again, we have the declaration of the struct and then the usage of the struct down here. Just to bring this back um, to say what's going on more generally, what's the syntax, is I have the word struct, 
and then uh, whatever name you want. And then uh, inside this, I have some types. So like type and then field name and then another type and then another field name. As many of those as I want. And this is how I declare a struct. And then once I have a struct to like that, I would say like struct your name, name. I meant to say your struct name, but I'm going to stick with this. Then I could call this whatever I want. So this makes a variable called x that has this type. And then I could say like x dot field name. Taxes. So this is kind of the general syntax. One very important thing to point out, um, which I'll leave this video on, is one little piece that you may forget sometimes is the semicolon right here. You need to have the semicolon at the end of the closing curly brace. It's unusual because in other things like for loops or while loops or if statements or function definitions where we've had curly braces, we don't have a semicolon at the end of it. In the case of struct definitions, we do need a semicolon. There is actually a good reason for it, um, which I won't get into now. But for now, just remember, you got to remember to put that semicolon there.